All right, I am back with Chris He's from KBAR Soap, and we're going to continue the conversation of questions from a male Marine to a female and vice versa. Um, so in the last conversation, we were talking about our service. We were talking about what led us to join. Where should we lead off, Chris? I mean, what's the next thing we should focus on? I don't know. I think uh, where you ended last time was you had a whole story about a tattoo and a uh, maybe a little bit of funny story. So let's start out with that and then get back into questions. So tell it's us a little bit about that. Tattoo story. Well, wait. No, I want to make everybody wait for it. Tell me about your tattoos because you're pretty tatted up. You got a lot going on. Did you do that in the Marine Corps or did you do it after? It's not cool to have a moto tat while you're in the Marine Corps. Um, oh. um, firmly believe that, but after I got out, it's all, it's all sleeve from California station, to Iraq, Build Memorial, um, got landmines, 1371, all my stuff. So I got a whole like moto sleeve um, after I got out. Uh, okay. So, cool. so the one that my goof up, so I'll go over my goof up because it's probably not as bad as yours. So yep. this whole tattoo is from Australia. Okay. That's but what I had here. We used to go to Tijuana all the time and we thought it would be a good idea to all get Dos Equis tattooed on our body somewhere. So it was a group of like five of us. We got two X's tattooed on us mm -hmm. on the way to Fallbrook back in the base. So I walked around, I don't know, two years while I was in the Marine Corps with the Mexican beer tattooed on my forearm. And then whenever we got to Australia on the way back from Iraq, I went into a tattoo parlor and I told him, I was like, I don't care what you do, cover up the Dos Equis. So he drew some Aboriginal art with a, with a big pin on my arm. And I was like, that looks good. Roll with it. And he covered up the Dos Equis. So I know a couple of my brothers still have Dos Equis on their arm. And we're pushing 40 now. So Good for them. I mean, good for them. The most interesting men alive right there. So are you proud of the cover-up? Do you like that cover-up? Or you're just not the thing that's underneath it? I like be hard for me to explain to my kids why I have a beer tattooed on me, I think. That makes uh, sense on your arm. Yeah, that's the same with mine, where it's hard to explain to virtually any living human being why I tattooed what I tattooed on my arm. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be honest, um, I had minimal tattoos on my body before I joined the Marine Corps. I had two that were recorded in whatever files you have to report in, right? Both yeah. on my back, so not visible. Since then, um, I, I had gotten, in the Marine Corps, I had gotten these wrist tattoos, which are forbidden. So you can't actually have them. If I wanted to stay in, I didn't grandfather them before they became a huge issue. So this was already disqualifying. I got this flower because my maiden name is LaFleur. Uh, go Pack Go for any Matt LaFleur Packers fans. Um, that is my cousin. But that was what the flower represents, is La Fleur, which is my maiden name. This is also French because clearly I come from a very French family. And then I have some secretive symbols that are representative of people in my life. This, this happened after the Marine Corps, much like you. It's not motivating. It's more dedicated to my seven-year-old son. I am a literature nerd, 100% admitted and proud. It is a poem from Langston Hughes, um, basically about giving me your dreams and I'll keep them safe from the world, okay? That's good. So then, so then we turn in. And the big question is, what is this big ass black mark on your arm? And that's right in the ditch too. That was probably yes. one of the worst places oh. I've ever got that. No, so the elbow is the worst. You touch the elbow, which I have a little bit touching the yeah. elbow. My tattoo artist had to grip my arm so hard that I had bruises because I just wanted to like hit him, right? Do you yeah. have any tattoos on your elbow? My, I, my elbow's not done. That's the only thing. Yeah, I done. judge people. I judge people for that. He said he wouldn't you know, do it because they wear out. He said, he said, I won't do that. He said, I can't guarantee my work because it'll just wear off because there's nothing no. but bone there. I'm like, okay. We'll whatever. go with that story. Yeah. Um, so anyway. <laughs> So I had mentioned in the last post that I was at Driftwood and I, it was my 21st or the weekend after my 21st. So that already tells you that this is, this is not a good story about to come. 
there's a tattoo parlor that you can literally walk to. You probably shouldn't, you should probably drive, but I was in not, I was not in a state to drive and I'm a very responsible Marine. Yeah, right. Go ahead. So anyways, um, legally people cannot talk to you if you are intoxicated, which I had to be carried into the tattoo parlor. So that tells you, I'm not naming any names, but I'm saying somebody should have probably said like, let's pretend to tattoo this girl because she's annoying and loud, um, but not actually tattoo her. <laughs> like, like, let's take a pen and just draw on her. Yeah. No, no, no. See, <laughs> thinks it's real and send her on her way. Yeah. And then I'll walk out of there like, look at my new tattoo. It didn't even hurt. That's not what happened though. Um, so I walk in there and I handed them one very important thing that a Marine possesses. And that is my dog tattoo. Okay. Chris, what's on your dog tag? Social Think security. Your social security. Your full social. Yeah. In 09, it was your full social security number. Oh, he's that way back then. Too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I handed the guy, I handed the tattoo artist, and he was like 500 pounds. I'll never forget this. I handed him my dog tags and I said, I put my dog tags on my arm. And he said, okay. So guess what I had my arm on my arm until it healed about, I don't know, four or five weeks later. My fucking, oh, my effing social security number. That is what's blocked on my arm right now. So I Did just you get want both to call tags them. done or just one? Both tags or one? Just one. Okay. All right. And, and you thought you had no other tattoos on your arm. So you decided a dog tag in your ditch was a good idea. That was like the best idea. Like I just came from this nasty strip club, okay? Like the, oh the driftwood for my Jacksonville Marines is like, I don't even know how you describe it. It's the it. Mecca, but I heard it closed. It's of nasty because it's right off. Like you get off and it is driftwood is your option. You can buy cars, you can get a tattoo, you can go to driftwood. That's your option right off of Lejeune, right? heading into um, base housing. Yeah. I, got, I got my dog tag social security number on me. But that's motivating okay. here though, because the bad decisions I know still spawn from both sides of the spectrum. Yes, yeah, we all make, so we're Equally. all young kids. We all make really stupid decisions because we're given these salaries that we've never had before. And we're like, let's blow this on tattoos in a car that will last three years and has like a spoiler and these rims and stuff like that. That's the crap we do. That's the crap you see in the military. So for all my yes. new joining members, save your freaking money, invest your freaking money. Um, be smart about it because especially when you deploy, you make like bank. I spent it on the dumbest shit. Oh man, I keep swearing, but I spent it on the dumbest stuff, stuff ever. So that that's a rite of passage. So you have to show up to your first duty station, and you have to go out in town and buy a car at like twenty percent interest, and like you have to. Get was your that's what I'm saying. So that's like you have to. I was fortunate enough to know a little bit about that, so I got a fourteen percent interest rate. I rode the bus out in the Oceanside one time. I was. I went, I showed up, I showed up to my duty station, checked in. Um, we got everything situated, took a bus out in the ocean side. And, mm -hmm. um, I told my buddies, I'm not driving. I'm, I'm not riding the bus back. I've never rode a bus. I'm not doing that. I'm not riding the bus. So I bought a car literally my first time out in town as a boot PFC. And so I just roll back in. Nobody even really knows me. And my other buddy I was with decided to be a good idea too. So he bought a firebird and he got straight raped on it. Like he got, <laughs> he got wrecked over the coals. Um, but we were in different companies cause we showed up from school and we decided we we're just going to go buy cars. Um, so we did that and they were like, Oh, what'd you get? 25% interest 20. And I was like, no, I actually got 14. I said, it's not, I said, it's not as good as I would have if I was like, had decent credit, but I'm a kid. Like, yeah, the best like I you don't pay. have credit. Typically. Yeah. I was like, so I don't think it's all that bad. And he was like, you only you got 14. I'm like, yeah. He was like, all right, whatever. Like, so I let me go. <laughs> I like how, mind yeah. you, I don't have a car payment, but when I did, 
as an adult in my 30s, it's 2%. So for the, my 18, 19 year olds that are like listening to Chris's story and be like, 14 is good. It's not good. No, no, no. 2%, two, three, four. That's what you're looking for. Not 14, 18%. It's, that's astronomical. That's stupid. But if you have no credit, anything less than 10, you got to yeah. start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. Like I would say don't start with buying a car, but... I'll leave it. Buy a piece of furniture. <laughs> Get a Literally, credit card. Buy, buy, buy $200 credit card. Yep, whatever. Yep. Finance yes, for Marines. There's better ways. Yep. To not screw up your credit as, as, a, as a young Marine. You literally only have any, you don't have any bills other than cable. If you want cable in your room, that's how ours was. Cell phone, um, maybe. Phone. Like, you're on a cell phone, whatever. That's it. You can eat it to chow hall. I know it sucks, but I mean. It's free. Well, free. you pay for it, but it's free. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Looking back on it, yeah, you don't make much money, but you don't have any bills unless it's, it's self-inflicted, right? So I mean, you know, you could you could live high on the hog at, at PFC pay if you stayed on the base all the time. But yeah. I don't know. That's no fun. There's no fun in that. No, um, no, I'm not saying. I'm not trying to ruin the party. I'm just saying, make <laughs> smart decisions. Don't do 18 percent APR. That doesn't sound like a lot. Like 18 and in comparison of 100% APR, I guess, does it sound like a lot, but just calling out. Let's make smart decisions, Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. That'll never happen. Yeah, that'll never happen. Okay. <laughs> there's a reason why when I had said there's tattoos, strip clubs, and car dealerships. Every single military base, that is what you will see. In fact, you're going to come back to civilian life and be like, there's all like the naked midgets and people with like their flashing car stuff. You know what I mean? Like I need to buy a car and there's just like Chrysler here. Hmm. Nope. It'll work. It's like the first one you come to. It doesn't even, I bought a Dodge Avenger. Definitely not a car dude, but it looked cool. It was red. It had rims on it. So I'm like, yeah, I like that enough. I'll buy it. Like, like whatever like it didn't even matter what it was i just got it so i have been there done that made stupid decisions yeah. um but but as long as you learn something from them it's, it's not all bad that's right that is right yeah. so sure so we got the tattoo story out of the way um let's see i don't know you want to handle another one should we do one more one more for the masses and then I feel it in you that you're tired. I'm tired. We're old. Okay. So it's just, since I was never around women, it's a rare opportunity for me to ask mm -hmm. some questions and I don't want to go into one that'll be too deep, but there's been a stir about the potential for co-ed boot camp. So I just want to know, I don't need to answer my part of it. What do you think about that? And how do you think that would change things? Do you know it's already in effect? That's what I heard. Is it? Well, I heard they're in the same building, like they follow lead kind of sort of, but I didn't know if they were intermingled, like but same I think they're in the same, um, what, okay, I'm gonna say something and people are gonna be like, are you a Marine? Okay, I can't remember. Where did you sleep? Why can't I think of the name? The barracks, squad base. What? Squad base, okay. Yeah. Um, they're not in the squad bays together. I don't think you're ever in the squad bays together, but I saw pictures because I do follow like Paris Island and stuff. And I saw yeah. pictures because much like you, when I was in, we crossed paths and we're like, oh my God, I need to smell a male after three months kind of thing. I vividly remember that because that was the only interaction. No land nav. We like, we saw each other in the dark and we had no idea. I had no idea what they looked like. They had no idea what we looked like. It was yeah. just, here's the opposite sex that you have not been exposed to in two months. You don't care what they look like. They're just there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think that's all intermingled, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. So I guess my opinion on it is this, and I'll kind of leave it. I'm not representing every single female Marine. And this is just my opinion is I was thankful as hard as it was as a 19 year old female and you have all these hormones going on. I was thankful in retrospect that it was strictly female because my DIs 
prepared us, at least tried to prepare us for life as a female in the Marines. And they could specifically focus on that without any type of degrading messages around it. It was just, here's the facts. Here's how it's been for us. Prepare yourself for this. And I feel like if you, I mean, there's certainly times where females will get independent time with their female DIs, but that was the theme throughout boot camp. And um, as much as, you know, you're 19, you take in what you want to take in at that time. Um, and I know I, I absorbed some of that and kept myself um, protected in many ways because of that message that I received. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how you would get that same type of over arching message if you have males in because I had mentioned in my last in the last conversation that even when I went to um I can't even why am I drawing a blank? Fort Leonard Wood, what are you talking about? No, not Fort Leonard Wood, Geiger. MC MCT, MCT. I'm sorry, I'm, I, this is how tired I'm in. I'm a, I'm a true freaking Marine. I showed Chris my DD-214, not the whole thing, but anyways. Um, <laughs> when I went there, I felt the defensive, at, or I felt myself getting defensive as a female Marine even there, even though at that point, all of us are pogues because grunts go to a completely different training area or whatever they do. Um, but you, you automatically feel that. And I can't even fathom what it would be like in boot camp. At least we had that separation to prepare us for what yeah. life, because there's so many stories I could give you not to be a victim, but there's just so many stories where it's like blatantly obvious sexism and, you know, as part of the military, it always will be, you, you males dominate and that's just the way it is. Um, so, and that's what I want to get into on future, future ones though. Like, because it's like, I, and what you just said is very important reason to keep it kind of how it is. You have sergeants and you have staff sergeants and you have gunnery sergeants. You have, you have, you have female leadership to been in Marine Corps. They've lived it, yeah. slept it, breathed it for the past five, 10, 15 years, depending on how far your leadership goes. And yeah. they can hold you and tell you that this is how it's going to be. Like you are in a, predominantly male environment so this is how you navigate that so uh, yeah. to your point integrating that i don't think i don't think is right once you hit the fleet you know everything changes once you hit the fleet and yeah. if you don't have that background if you don't know what you're up against i think it'd be 10 times worse i think it'd be a lot worse for you to be i don't know maybe it's me and i'm not trying to be sexist about it but i think it needs to stay that way because they've lived it and they can give you better information yeah. than some man that yeah. I've never served with. How many, how many grunts drill instructors would be able to, to, to accurately tell a female Marine that's a boot how to prepare them for whenever they hit the fleet? Zero. Cause they I have no experience. Be, and also they have this mentality and, and we'll talk about this for sure in the future, but there is this, um, stereotype of female Marines that every, every grunt that I've been around, has this in their head and we'll talk about that specifically but no I 100% agree but I also don't want to downplay that I recognize um, and somebody I just asked me a question in live could you carry a, a body in combat yeah. could you you can't answer that but do I know physically I am different than you 100% I'm not denying that there's no denial not to say that there aren't females that can compare and adrenaline changes everything. I've personally experienced adrenaline and it makes you into a beast. Um, but at the same time, when we're talking about boot camp standards and um, you know, there is standards specific to females versus males, and at least you're kind of shielded to the introduction of that. So yeah. um I mean, it's worth a call out and I'm not for any females listening to this and thinking, oh, she's just trying to agree with the male side. No, no. I come to you with a true heart saying, I learned so much that I don't know if I would have learned if males were integrated into it. So I can look at this as a, you know, in my thirties as a woman and say, I thank God. Okay. I don't want to get that personal, but I, I'm so thankful that I had an all-female platoon. There's pride in that. 
Um, and there's, there's things I benefited from. Yeah. And the camaraderie you have that you share that you may not have immediately got with the male counterparts, right? Yeah. Because everybody's yeah. thinking about different things. And I, the, I don't know, to me as a male, having females around while you're training, your mind's not going to be on training. It's going to be on that the because females. we're all young. Absolutely. We're teenagers. So, Our home hormones, we can feed yeah. off of each other's hormones. So your focus is not on the training because as nope. you and I both mentioned, boot camp serves as a place to change us. And we are solely focused on becoming not a recruit, but a, a member of the United States Marine Corps. Um, nope. And to have that, you need to have sole focus on the end goal, which is becoming a United States Marine, right? And no as a 19 year old girl, yeah, as a 19 year old girl, I had one night of, nav, of land nav where I like crossed paths with a male and my, my, I was just like, oh my God, there's a male kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Y'all did that too. The males did that too, because that's, we're teenagers. That's yep. how it, it happens. is what it is. So, so I guess that's my long winded answer to that. Oh, that's good. That's perfect. And I think we could probably talk again at some point, like the whole, what you brought up about, because the drag and stuff and carrying people like, we'll have, I think we could talk for another little 10 minute thing about women in combat, your opinion on that, everything. I think we can grow from that. So this was good though. Thank you for yeah. that. Yes. All right. Well, we're both tired. I mean, we're old yes. veteran Marines now. We need to get our sleep and in our comfy beds, no longer on a fucking cement floor. Oh, I swear. We'll just leave that out. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a good night. Thank you so much. I'm glad your computer fixed itself. <laughs> it took a minute. My bad. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. Bye.